It's the first day of winter here in Australia and I'm keeping warm with another power meter review. And this one has been quite the ride. The power meter in question is the relatively new Precision 3 from Four Eyes. Key updates of this unit from previous generations are there on screen. Up to 800 hours of claimed battery life. That's up from 100 hours on previous generations. And the power meter pod on the unit is a lower, slimmer profile. Four Eyes are claiming this unit will fit almost any buy frame on the market today. Now what I thought was going to be a pretty straightforward refresh and quick review of a power meter revision has been anything but. As I've mentioned, it's been quite the journey that is still ongoing. I did have a release day review ready to drop at four hours prior to the embargo lifting. Four Eyes released another firmware invalidating that review entirely. So that was shelved. And over the past few months, I've been getting regular firmware updates that have been fine tuning this. So today though, I think it's time to finally get my review out and to let you know where things are at today with the latest firmware that I've had released up to this unit here, which is 1.1.0, which will be landing for everybody else with retail units, I believe, next week. Covering off the full technical specifications of this power meter here, it's a crank-based power meter, single-sided left Shimano crank is the one that I've been testing. The wireless, you'll get AT Plus and Bluetooth Smart. The battery, one single 2032 with a claimed battery life of up to 800 hours. Power measurement, you'll get left power only, which is doubled to give you an estimate of your total power. You'll also get cadence, power accuracy, plus or minus 1% claimed power from 0 to 4,000 watts, cadence 30 to 170 RPM. It's accelerometer based, so there's no need for a magnet on your frame. Active temperature compensation, IPX7 waterproofing, firmware upgradable via the 4i app, which has been quite important with this over my journey to date. The weight of the pod is only 9 grams, warranty 3 years, and another thing of note is the Chipolo tracking has been removed from this, or not included. It was a feature of the Precision 2s. There are two ways you can get the Precision 3 on your bike, and that's with Ride Ready, where you get sent a brand new crank with the pod already installed, or the factory install, where you send in your crank, they put on a sensor pod and send it back to you. Pricing, well, it does vary because there's a few different options, but the Ride Ready supplied with the Shimano 105 crank comes in at 334.99 US, 324.99 pounds, or 324 euros. Obviously that's the lower end with the 105, it's a little more for the Durace level stuff. Alrighty, a quick close up of what comes in the box. Obviously the full left crank with this version here. This is the R8000 Altegra 172.5. All the details on the back of the box and further details inside the box. For your viewing pleasure. Crank itself, stock standard. Normal weight is around 200 grams. This comes in at 210, meaning the pod weight plus battery isn't much at all. Speaking of the battery, there it is, one single 2032, where they hope to claim 800 hours battery life out of. Not too bad. All right, there's the crank. Let's go. Some commentary on power meter comparisons, and it can be difficult to get good quality comparative data. If you're using different head units to collect data, even from the same power meter, you're going to get different overall averages depending on how that unit records its data. If you're using a Wahoo, a Garmin, a Brighton, maybe Zwift or Trainer Road, and then trying to compare those data sets, things will be a little different. I find it best practice to use the same devices or devices from the same manufacturer or family to eliminate or reduce these recording issues. For this testing, I've been using Garmin Edge units. Testing single-sided power meters can be a little trickier than testing dual or total power power meters. That's because leg balance influences the overall total power. I find it best practice to compare these single-sided meters to a single-sided pedal connected to the same crank. That being a Asium Uno, Powerlink Single, or a Garmin Rally Single Sider, which is the 100 series. That way you're comparing apples to apples, there's no drivetrain loss, and left-right balance doesn't come into play. It's left from both and doubled. In my testing over the last six months, and it has been six months of testing, I've had the Precision 3 up against the Powerlink Single from Wahoo, the Asioma Uno, and I've been using the Doretto XR as my control indoors, which reports total power. What I'm testing for is obviously the power numbers, cadence, reliability against those other known good meters. That testing's been done both indoors and out with steady state erg, over and under, sprinting, and a few accelerations or ramp tests. To date, I have 17 comparative data sets as the firmware has evolved on this. But what I'm covering today is what's important, the latest firmware, 1.1.0, which was released last Saturday to this unit here, and I believe is coming next week to everybody else's unit too.
As always, here we are on my favorite website, the DCR Analyzer Tool, where we can compare multiple activity files as an overlay and see how they stack up. Starting off with a road ride, and standing back, looking at the power data here up against the Asioma Unos, 201, 203, not bad. It's the detail that we need to look into. First thing I'll look into here after the warm up is the response time from this unit here. Earlier firmwares, this thing was very uh, laggy in picking up power and detecting cadence and therefore power numbers. What I've got here is on off, on off, on off for varying rates. So 10 seconds, eight seconds or so, six, five, four, three, two, and one. The blue, big me Favero Asioma. Now this is the, does say duo on the screen there, but that's just the way I've got it registered with uh, Ray's tool here. It is the Uno. What we're seeing here is the Precision 3 being probably one second laggy or different than the Uno. So the blue's kicking in quicker here, here, close here, 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 and here. So there's a common theme throughout that. This is with the latest firmware. Previous firmware, that was up to four or five seconds lagged. So they really have squeezed that down. It's really neither here nor there. If you're using three second average or say 10 second average, looking at your data, it's something to be aware of though. And it does have an influence on the sprints that we'll be looking at later on. So responsiveness from this unit is slightly lagged but much better than what it was. Um, I'll ignore a few of these sections here. Let's get to later in the ride by grabbing this just here. We have 202 versus 206, pretty close. What we're seeing though is the four eyes being very jagged. You can see spikes here, here. Uh, it's just what I call noisier than the Uno. Now there's always going to be the starts and stops and recording differences, which as I've mentioned, I try to eliminate but there's a reason for what you're seeing on the screen. And that comes from the cadence reporting. To dive more into that, I'll jump into this power section through here. Again, looking pretty good, but we've got 239, 240. So within a watt there for uh, 10 minutes, slow ramp test and steady state with a small sprint. But as you see there, the purple, the four eyes precision is, well, jagged. One second smoothing, so you're expecting to be jagged with a single sided, but this is more than the Uno. Jumping to the cadence of that same section and we find out what's going on. Uh, again, more jagged cadence reporting and sometimes some dips in the cadence here, 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 here. Uh, these may be related to gear changes and the crank actually sensing uh, different movement throughout the 360. However, it's not happening with the Uno and this does have a negative influence on the total power being reported. So I believe the differences in power with the spikes is due to the cadence sensor being a little troublesome on this unit. Looping back to the sprints, the first sprint that I performed out on the road, not too bad. Four eyes, a little delayed in hitting peak, but eventually getting there. The second sprint through here, slow ramp up into the sprint. Again, four eyes, a little delayed coming up. This could be recording issues, plus or minus one second but you do see it does spike to peak power a little later than the Uno. And the last sprint, which was super fast, just on the pedals and off, uh, the Uno is a little spikier through here, but the Four Eyes does take a two seconds or so to come up and hit its peak power. My take on this outdoor ride is that the Precision 3 with the latest firmware overall isn't too bad. It's performing well when riding along in steady state. That cadence sensor being a little jagged and dropping down a little bit is having a negative influence on the power being jagged too. And the peak power, just a little slower. Not a showstopper and kind of ballpark what you'd expect from a, look, let's be honest, a budget single-sided meter. On to the first of two indoor rides and things remain the same as outdoors, but they start to unravel in other ways. Uh, a large ride here, this was two hours on Zwift with the Llama lab test in the middle. I'm not including the trainer here, I'm just going straight against the Asioma Unos. Again, standing back, we're looking at 145 versus 145 averaging, but there's more to it than just the overall averages. Into the steady state and peak sprint. Steady state looks good, peak sprint a little low indoors. And this is something that I'll be focusing on the next data set, which I performed yesterday. So the Asioma Unos, it does say duo there. Again, it's just the label that I have. It is the Uno, a little higher, a little more responsive all the way through. The precision is keeping a little lower through peak. The over and unders and a slight little session there with I think one of the pace partners on Zwift. We're looking at 169, 169. Overall, looking pretty good there. 
for that 17 minute section. So that's looking cool. Cadence from that section also looking pretty good, but indoors is a controlled environment. Nice and smooth, no vibrations, no rough roads, no potholes, no rocks. It's a perfect environment for testing things. Sometimes a little too perfect, so that's why we ride outdoors as well. Finally, for this two hour ride, just chilling uh, before some other dropouts that took place, uh, thanks to my microwave oven. We'll grab this section here, uh, 43 minutes, 115, 116, lots of up and downs, um, but overall looking pretty good. So first indoor ride, steady state, looking good. Uh, just riding along, looking good. There's a question hanging over those peak power numbers, which is exactly what I dived into for data set number two, a Llama lab test short. And for this, I will include the trainer in the data. Again, a disclaimer, the trainer measures total power. The Asioma Uno and the Four Eyes P3 are measuring left and doubling it. The last two there are influenced by left, right leg balance. Jumping into the steady state. Llama lab test short. So there's only five minute sections here. All looking pretty good. What do we have? 225 from the trainer, 227, 230. Not too bad. Um, a few gear changes just here. So again, just riding along. Numbers coming from this looking pretty good. Two sprints just here and things unravel a little bit for the Precision 3. The uh, Asioma Unos, nice and quick in both cases and matching the Elite Dorado XR in both peaks. Very close, very short sprints these. But the trend there is that the four eyes precision, not even close, not even breaking the thousand watt there and only just breaking over the thousand watt there when the other two are reporting around 1200 watts. That's suboptimal. Why is that taking place? The answer is in the cadence section for this. And at 929.59, when I hit peak power on the first sprint, the, well, the Elite Trainer doesn't really matter what it's doing for cadence, but it's reporting 125. The Asioma Uno's there reporting 113 RPM. But the Precision 3 is only reporting 94 RPM. Therefore, at the same torque on the crank, it's going to be reporting lower power, and it is. It's only a few seconds later when it comes up. So the lag in the cadence reporting is having a negative influence on the peak power reporting. If I could put out that peak power for five, 10, 20 seconds, I'm sure that cadence sensing would come up to the right area and those numbers would equalize. However, my short sprint testing, it's not doing too well. A quick look at the over and unders, the 20 second over and unders before jumping into the final sprint. And the numbers aren't too bad from there. 229 from the trainer, which is total power and a two power meters connected to the left side only, 235, 238. A little spikier again there from the four eyes, but overall not too bad for responsiveness there, just changing erg mode zones. Probably helped out by the Elite Doretto being one or two seconds before it gets to where it needs to and stabilizing, helping this little puppy here sort itself out with the cadence sensing. And because third time's a charm, which will be the fourth indoor sprint, I think let's dive into that. And again, the trend is still taking place. This time peak power coming from the Asioma Uno at around 11.32, 11.45. The Elite Dorado XR reporting around 11.59, so very close there. The Precision left only peaking out at 7.98 with that short, sharp sprint. Again, the cadence tells the picture of what's going on there. The four eyes are a little slower to pick up the cadence. So when I'm hitting peak with the other meters or other meter, and the trainer, the four eyes are still coming to the party, um, reporting uh, 132 RPM. Also dropping low just there too, causing a little lower reading for the peak power. To me, all indications are that the cadence sensing on this is what's causing the problem. So to add fuel to the fire, I did some cadence testing of this unit. Spinning out as quickly as I could on Zwift, put it up into an easy gear and spun, 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 and at a certain RPM, the four eyes just gives up. Did it again, lower power. The power numbers are gonna be all through the shop because I'm spinning at, well, we'll see the RPMs in just a few moments, but I can make the four eyes report zero power when I still actually am doing power. What were those cadence numbers? They are right here. Blue being the four eyes, it stops at 130, 130, and then just drops out with the Uno spinning up to around 170. The Elite Dorado XR is estimating cadence from the power profile, so it's doing pretty well, given I was spinning like crazy. Uh, test number two, it got to the blue here, the 4 eye precision, 155, 155, 155, and dropped out, whilst the Favero Uno was still recording cadence and power at the time. Finally, just some riding along, riding along, and responsiveness tests, uh, 84 from the trainer, 90 and 91. So again, just riding along, not too bad, but when you really put the acid on this unit with a peak power sprint or some super high cadence work, it's not really a pretty picture. 
On to my conclusions and some observations after spending many months with this unit here. And I am quite surprised at the issues that I've been having with a third generation meter from Four Eyes. This is not their first rodeo. It's been a few good months since this has been released and all indications are it's still a little underdone. Having said that, the latest firmware 1.1.0 has been a major improvement to the data sets and my ride experience with this power meter. All indications are pointing towards the cadence sensing on this unit being the problem. Jagged cadence means jagged power. Inaccurate cadence or delayed cadence results in peak power numbers being missed and things just not lining up. Look, power meters are tricky to get right and this is no exception. I think what's happening here is they're just trying to squeeze too much out of that small CR2032 battery. 800 hours, that's a lot of time. I would have been happy with say 400 hours, 200 hours or even keep it at the 100 hours if this thing correctly measured the effort that I was doing. So whilst the latest firmware is a major improvement on this and I highly recommend updating once it lands for everybody else if you have one of these units, I still hope they can squeeze a little bit more out of that cadence sensor to smooth out some of the issues that I've encountered. From here, it's hovering around the budget level power meter. It's kind of close, but not quite there. Definitely not on par with other units on the market doing the same thing. And unfortunately not on par with the previous generation, Precision 2. From here, I'll be keeping an eye on further firmware updates to this. So stay tuned and we'll see you soon.